Hey, if you want to be in the intellectual property school, what you need to do is go below and get into the app. And what you want to do is do this really, really quickly because that's the only way that you can get into the intellectual property school. And I should let you know the price is going to go up end of July. So if you want to be part of the intellectual property school, we'll teach you how to set up a holding company, teach you how to set up operating companies, teach you how to set up business credit, teach you how to start an online business. You want to go below and get in and fill out the application. Now, why do I have an application? So I can actually have the best students so I can get the best results. So if you want to be in the intellectual property school, go below and get fill out the app and then you will be scheduled if we have a meeting of the minds for a live phone call. So with that, let's get into this video. I was having a conversation with someone that left a comment and this is one of the things that just perplexes me because what we do here, we're about building businesses, creating cash flow, getting rich, and then in turn using the income for getting rich to become wealthy. Yet I have a lot of, and I remember the term, I used to call them yard birds. That was the term. We have a lot of yard birds, folks who, like this was a conversation that I was having with someone that I had a video that was talking about why you should get up early if you wanna be successful. And then he put up there, you know, I have roommates and they pay me rent, so it doesn't really matter when I get up. And we went through a further conversation where I said, can you retire off your rental income? And he said, no. And then he went ahead and went ahead and said, I don't need to make 100,000 because I get by just fine on 14,000. And if you can help me out, understand why these people who don't want to really do anything, don't want to build anything, you know, that's fine. This is America. You can live your life any way you want to. But I don't know why these people are hanging around this channel when we talk about building wealth, getting rich, making money, and not being a regular, normal person. I just wanted to get that off my chest because it just, I, I consistently have these people who are preaching having a low level life, a lower a life of low expectations, a low accomplishments, not a lot into their things. And if that's what you want to be and that, if that's what you want to live, knock yourself out. But here at I Eat Fire, we're talking about building, creating, and making, number one, getting to that corporate citizen level of $250,000 a year, and then taking that income and then investing it so we can become wealthy later on in life. That's what we're here doing. And this is one of the reasons that you want to start a holding company right now. This is one of the things that we're doing in intellectual property. We're changing up the training. And once again, we're being very, very heavy on the paperwork, the information, and the business side. Now, paperwork is really, really important because I'll share something with you. Today, I got a new American Express Platinum business card. I have a personal American Express Platinum. I already have a business platinum, and I got another business platinum. And this business platinum comes with a $50,000 pay over time limit. Now, what does that mean? American Express, which is my favorite card, credit card issuer, they will have charge cards. American Express Platinum, American Express Gold, American Express Green, and the American Express Plum. And typically with these charge cards, they want you to pay the bill typically when it's due. But with this pay over time limit, and I have $80,000 in pay over time limit, I can use my American Express charge card as if it was a regular credit card. So my total spend limit at the moment is 550,000 across two American Express Platinums and one American Express Gold. Now, why do I bring that up? Is it to flex or to impress you? No, it's to illustrate to you what is possible if you go ahead and set up a holding company today. Now, this is why. And also, right now, there are people who are telling you that we're not even gonna go into that. I'm gonna save that for my student, a way for you to get maximum business funding, business credit. Because this is one of the things we teach in the intellectual property school. By setting up a holding company, 
and doing things in a certain manner, this prefaces you for getting massive, and I'm talking about massive business credit in the future. So that's one of the reasons that you wanna set up a holding company. Now, I get a lot of questions like, what is a holding company? What's the best site to set up a holding company? A holding company can be a C Corp, which is a different level of formation because you have to run a public notice when you set up a C Corp. It can be a partnership. It can be a, a, a partnership. It can, you know, it can be an S Corp. It can be a C Corp, it can be a partnership, or it can be an LLC. And I preferably love to do LLCs because LLCs are extremely easy and fast to get set up. Literally in the state of Georgia, if you wanted to set up your LLC, like if I went into the Georgia Secretary of State this morning and I set up my LLC and I paid for additional processing, which is like 250, I can have a live and active LLC, get my EIN and go to the bank, get my business checking account tomorrow. So LLCs are really, really good. And also while we're having this conversation about setting up your holding company. There's some things that I need to bring up. Number one, do you want to set up your holding company as a public company? Public company, your name is on the record. Anyone can go to the Secretary of State, wherever your holding company is format, formatted, and see who owns that holding company. Or, and once again, I've had some things that have happened that have uh, shown me the purpose because my new setup is private. I posted, you know, my new American Express credit card in the community section and I marked out the name of the company because essentially going forward in the future, and this is something you may want to listen to, you may want to have a private holding company because at this point, once I go ahead and format and get certain things set up, no one is going to know who owns these holding companies and I'm gonna have an additional level of privacy. Currently, I live in a high rise and you know, it's pretty hard to get in here. If you just drove by and walked in the building, you could not get to my floor without being let up on the floor, which provides an extra measure of security. Now, probably at some point later on this year, I'll be moving out of here and this is another, this is a privacy lesson. One of the things that happen is, if you don't believe me, you can go to the Google machine, put your name in, and you can probably find out where you live. And this comes from public records. And this is something that happens with your credit cards, and this is something that happens with the credit bureaus and the credit reporting agencies. Now, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian do not report your public address but Nexus, Lexus, and some other secondary credit bureaus do. So the next time I move, not only will I have a private holding company, but you will not be able to go to the Google machine and see where I live because I have figured out exactly what they do to go ahead and put your address in the public record. And this is something that will be in the training for the intellectual property school. One of the reasons that, you, that you know, I already told you, the first reason you can get massive business credit. The second reason, when you go ahead and set up a holding company, your mindset is very, very different. You go ahead and you set up your holding company, okay? And then you, actually have the mental clarity, the mental fortitude to know that you're going to start more than one business. And essentially in the training, I recommend that when you set up your holding company, for you to set up three to four operating companies for the future, for the future. And this is going to take a little money. If you're like broke dick Danny and you're dead broke, this may not be for you because this is going to take pretty much holding company and let's go ahead and say four operating companies. That's going to be five LLCs. So this is going to be close to, I would say, 800 to $1,000, depending on what state you live in. And if you live in California, I have some ideals for you because this is one of the things. Once you understand holding company strategy, holding company techniques. You can literally set up a holding company. Let's say you live in California, right? 
And California has really, California and New York have really expensive holding company setups. California is like $800 per company. So for you to set up a holding company in five companies, you're gonna be spending like $5,000 just on your setup and maintenance. Whereas, say you're in, living in California, and you want to set up a holding company, you can set up a holding company in another state. You could live in California, but you could set up your holding company in another state. And these are some other strategies and techniques and tricks that I will teach you in the intellectual property school. Because one of the things that you have to be aware of, because I, I will go ahead and explain and I'll go into greater detail for my students. I'm also getting ready to move to Florida. I know it's like, what do you mean you're gonna move to Florida? I am gonna move to Florida. I've worked it out where I will have property in Florida and, pro and Florida will become my home of record. And that's where I will file my taxes from the state of Florida, which has no state tax. And this is gonna save me a tremendous amount of money. Now, once again, because I practice the holding company concept and I practice having multiple companies, it is not strange that I would live in Florida and I would spend time in Georgia. It's not strange at all. I have a house in Florida, I have a house in Georgia. But for the sake of income tax, I'm just going to make Florida my home of record. I may, you know, it, it really depends. It really depends. And this is some stuff that we will get into in the intellectual property school. There is a multitude of reasons for you to set up a holding company today. I mean, it's mind boggling like literally the things that you can do, the things you can set up. And it's, it's about the mindset. It's about having that open concept to know that you're gonna have a holding company. And the holding company is the management company. And the management company will be managing these operating companies. So this is the procedure that we will teach you and train you. Number one, set up your holding company properly. Set up your operating companies properly and then get that first operating company set up. And it's, once again, until you start making money, doesn't make any sense to turn your holding company into an S corporation until there's money coming in there. And one of the things that we're gonna teach you is how to do that, how to set that up. And I can tell you something, you know, since we're all friends here, that if you do this properly, in the next year, you could be sitting on $300,000 worth of business credit. And you know, right now I'm running a cert, an app where you have to fill out the app before we have the conversation. So I can kind of see where you're, you are mentally. And people do not understand the massive power of having a lot of business credit. It's amazing because one of the things that you can do is use your business credit to set up certain things and also, I also have cash. I have a lot of cash, but I'm finding out, and th this is one of the things, and this is something I'm gonna share with you. Um, I am flying to Florida in the very near future, and this is for to establish my property situation in the state of Florida. And one of the things that I have been finding out to be really, really amazing is when you use credit cards correctly, uh, literally, before I book this Florida trip, which I'm gonna consider this Florida trip to be pleasure. And this is my rule. Pleasure trips, I use points. Business trips, I actually pay for them and I get more points. So, but the thing is, if you listen to me and you follow the things that I say and you go ahead and you, let's, let's go ahead and just walk down the imaginary lane. Let's say your name is Claire. And Claire, you've come to the YouTube channel, you've signed this, you've signed up for the Intellectual Property School, and now Claire has a holding company, and Claire has four operating companies. Operating company number one, operating company number two, operating company number three, operating company number four. Then she takes number one, and she goes ahead and follows the process of setting up her first active business. And we teach you that. Your first active business is gonna be a home-based business that is going to give you an incredible amount of tax deductions that you currently don't have. That's gonna be the first business and we walk you through it step by step by step. And with this process, Claire now has 
holding company, operating company, and let's go into year two. Then Claire's like, I wanna start this kind of business. I wanna really get into this kind of business. And I'm like, okay. Then choose one of your inactive operating companies because you've already had four operating companies set up, four. And one is active, so that means you have three naked operating companies that are waiting to be fulfilled. And this is one of the things that you will learn in business. You must build capacity in advance. And this is one of the reasons so many people struggle because number one, their paperwork is out of order. They don't have the right setups. They don't have the right business banking. They're, they're just literally trying to start something. I call this the hustle man hustle. I want to start a hustle. I want to start making some money. I don't want to set up an LLC. I don't want to set up a holding company. I just want to make that money. And then they get into a trap. They get into this trap because this is the United States of America. We are a paperwork organization. You need your tax returns. You need your bank statements. You need your cash flow. There right now, there's a lot of people here in Atlanta who are caught up in hustle man culture. They have a hustle. They have something that makes them a lot of money. But guess what? They can't afford to get a mortgage for a house because they don't have the proper paperwork. They can't get a mortgage. They can't get a loan. They can't get high limit business credit because they don't have the proper paperwork and situation because they never knew or they weren't trained in how to set these things up. And this is one of the things that we walk you through through the Intellectual Property School, how to have the proper setup, how to have the proper paperwork, how to have the right organization set up. So there's a lot that goes into it, but once you make up your mind that I wanna have a holding company and I wanna have future businesses and I want to have multiple streams of cash flow. And let's talk about that. This is why we set up the holding company. This is why we set up the operating company. And we do not actually mess with operating company number two, number three, number four, until we get operating company number one, more hands off. You get an operating company number one, let's say, in the beginning, it's taking you because number one, we do not advise you to quit your job. This is nothing that I will ever tell you to quit your job. You're going to keep your job because your job is going to provide you cash flow to pay your bills while you build out your business. So year one, you keep your job and then, you know, your business is making money. And now you have the option. Do I quit my job or do I keep my business and do I start another business? Because once you walk through this procedure and the setups, it becomes quite easy. And then let's say you're in the year one, your operational company's up and we're running. And let's say you've got your operational company where it takes you five hours a week of active management, five hours a week where you have to do things to get that. So this gives you plenty of time to do something else. And then you get into your second company. Because at the moment, I have my YouTube business, I have my online course business, I have my affiliate marketing business, and that's pretty much my streams of income. And essentially, for me, all of my streams of income kind of work together. The YouTube business, the online course business, the affiliate marketing business, they all work together. So I can actually not really have to stretch myself to make my businesses work. And this is one of the things that we will teach you in the intellectual property school, because, you know, let me share something with you guys. When I wrote my first book, the writing of that book and the completion of that book was the most amazing feeling, the amazing thing, because it was a sense of pride, it was a sense of accomplishment. Little did I know that writing that first book was gonna open up this door to the intellectual property school. I have made more money from my mind from my mind than anything else I have done in life. And this is some stuff that we're gonna walk you through. I've made money with a YouTube channel. I've made money with a blog. I've made money with a podcast. And these are all mental things that I will teach you and walk you through as we build out the Intellectual Property School because I'm excited. You should be excited too, because as we get to this, your life will be totally different once you go through this process and build out the thing. And right now, you can get into the Intellectual Property School for $3,000, because I'm still building it out. But I can tell you, the end of July, because right now, there's a lot of training there to get you started, to get you rolling, and 
end of July, the price of the intellectual property school goes up. So what you wanna do is go below and the application information is in the description box and go ahead and get into the app and schedule your phone call as soon as possible. And what I will do is if you're on the schedule, let's say it pops up, it's August 3rd, but you booked your call in July. So as long as your call was booked in July, you will be able to get the $3,000 entry fee. But after that, if your call is booked August 1st, you will be welcome to the new pricing. So go below, fill out the app, because I'm really enjoying these apps. Some of you are putting down amazing, really intelligent answers, and I really like that. And I'm getting ready to create another app for my students so that they can put stuff in so we can actually start having intelligent and fruitful conversations. So once again, go below, fill out the app. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.